Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. I am Caitlin, which many of you know. If you have taken yoga classes with me through EXOS or our meditation program for Renew You, I'm happy you're here with me today. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. I will invite you to come into a comfortable cross-legged position to open up our practice with a brief meditation. You can bring the hands to the knees, sitting cross-legged, either in Sukhasana, maybe you take heel to pelvis, heel to ankle for Siddhasana. Maybe you come into a lotus or a half lotus. So whatever is comfortable for you, and we'll start to tap into our breath. So inhaling in through the nose, down into the belly, or sitting up nice and tall. Shoulders start to drop down away from the ears. Ribs become nice and soft on the exhale as the belly button draws back to the spine. So the theme of our class today it's all about that moolah, and I don't mean money. Although, depending on how you look at it, money can play a role. I'm instead talking about muladhara, the root chakra. And so, if this is way out of your element and you have no idea what I'm talking about, please know that we're going to get great opening and stretching and activation in our hips, groin, and low back today. For those of you who are familiar with or would like to be familiar with the Muladhara, the root chakra. That will be our focus. So the root chakra is connected to all of those primal instincts, our self-preservation, security, sense of safety. And when outside environments or situations are disruptive to that, or even internal ones, we can start to feel and see a shift in our day-to-day -day activities. Seeing a shift in our personal relationships, our escape choices, our diet choices. So come back to your breath if you've lost it while you've been listening to me, inhaling in through the nose, down into the belly. For the last piece of our meditation, we are gonna bring our hands into a muladhara mudra. So a root supportive mudra. So we'll bring the hands together in front of us, palms facing up. Ring finger and pinky finger are going to interlace together. So if you're looking down at your hand, it will go pinky, pinky, ring finger, ring finger. Cool. And then you remember that game when you were a kid where it was like something with the steeple and the fingers were inside your palm? So we're going to flip our palms so they kiss together, tucking our ring finger and our thumb twine down into the pocket of our palm. Ring finger tips, the pads of the ring finger, or excuse me, the middle finger, are going to kiss together. And then the forefinger and the thumb, we're going to make rings with them, but interlocking. So it'll look almost like, um, the infinity sign. So I'll go ahead and bring this closer so that you can see me. Make sure you have it right. So this is what it will look like from the front and from the side, or from the back, I guess. Okay. 
So once you have it, you've got two choices here. You can either bring this right to your heart space, or we drop the middle fingers down to the ground, bringing the bulk of our hands right at the pelvis. Come back to your breath if you've lost it and bring an awareness to the base of the pelvis. So the six bones and tail rooting down into the ground. And we're sitting up nice and tall. Let's take three more breath cycles here. Inhaling in through the nose. Down into the belly. One more round. Inhaling in through the nose. Down into the belly. And after your exhale, go ahead and release the hands. We're going to come to lie on our back. When you get there, soles of the feet are going to kiss together. So heel to heel, arch to arch, toe to toe. Knees open wide, Sutta Baddha Konasana. Recline bound angle. We're going to set ourselves up for success here to begin. So shoulders are rooted down to the ground. Shoulder blades are snuggled right underneath the heart space. Chin is tucked slightly to the chest, so we're keeping length in the back of the neck. Low back is flush with the mat. If it doesn't uh, feel like you're doing that, try scooping the tail up towards the ceiling. So this may feel really tight right now at the beginning of practice, but we want to begin with activating and bringing attention right to that root. And so normally we're warmed up a bit before we come here. If you're feeling a pressure or pulling in the groin, go ahead and back off a little bit, raising the knees or bringing some supports underneath the outside of the thighs. Hands come down to the ground next, right next to the outer thighs. We're gonna inhale, arms swing up overhead, and at the same time, we're gonna send our tail down to the ground. So we've got this little pocket underneath our low back. Inhale. Exhale, hands come down by our sides, and we scoop the tail up to the ceiling, bringing the low back flush with the mat. Ready, let's go again. Inhale, arms come up overhead as we rock the tail towards the earth, creating our little back bend. Exhale, arms float down and we scoop the tail up to the ceiling. Inhale, arms come up, tail goes down. Exhale, arms go down, tail comes up. One more time, inhale, arms come up, tail is down. Exhale, arms come down, tail scoops up. Let's stay here with the tail scooped, low back is flush. We feel that foundation underneath of us, our connection with the mat. Inhale. And exhale, we gently guide the legs back together. Once the knees kiss, let's bring them close to the chest, wrapping the hands around the shins just for one breath, giving a gentle squeeze. And on the exhale, we run hands down the front of the shins, crossing over the ankles, grabbing the outsides of the feet. So now we've got this kind of Elevated Sutta Baddha Konasana. And rock gently side to side if that feels good, just waking up the spine. We take an inhale, 
And on the exhale, belly grows really soft and heavy, and we shine hamstrings up to the sky, soles of the feet kick up towards the ceiling. Ankles and knees are in line with each other. We root the shoulders back down to the mat. If you have a strap or the strap of a robe maybe or an exercise band, you can use that here as an extension of your arms if this feels difficult to reach your feet. Belly's heavy. We're sending the tail towards the front of the mat. Pressure in the fingertips gives this nice compression in the front of the hips. One more inhale here. And on your exhale, we'll gently lower by going out the way we came in. So soles are going to kiss together with the help of our hands and then gently lower, hands glide over the shins, back to the knees, down the thighs as the soles kiss down to the ground. Left leg shoots out long, right leg catches at the shin, knee to shoulder. Exhale, right leg is coming across the midline as we find a recline twist. Right leg comes over to the left side of the mat. Both shoulders are pinned down to the ground. Maybe you turn to look past your right fingertips. Maybe you straighten that right leg. It's up to you. We're here for one more breath. Exhale, draws you back through center and we take it to the other side. So first right leg shoots out long, left leg comes up for us to catch around the shin as we gently squeeze the left knee towards the left shoulder. Inhale, and on the exhale, left leg is crossing over the midline to the right side of the mat via recline twist. One more breath cycle. And exhale, draws you back through center. Left leg's gonna stay where it's at. Right leg is gonna come meet the left. If you have spinal issues or you just feel unstable and uncomfortable with this, that's okay. You can come onto the side and roll up. We're gonna meet in tabletop. However, let's give a little spinal massage waking up the meridian that carries the energy from our roots up to the rest of our chakras. So hands are gonna grab the backs of the legs, right at the hamstrings. We kick the heels up to the sky and roll up to a seated position. Let's go again, we rock back, heels kick, and we roll, sitting up nice and tall one more time. On this last one, try some grace, crossing the ankles and rolling it right on through, and we come into a tabletop position. Did you guys hear that ruckus outside, that honking? The joys of doing home practices, virtual classroom. You get the honking. All right, so we're in tabletop. We're gonna warm up with a couple natural, or not natural, but uh, traditional, Cat cows. So we're set up here, wrists are right under the shoulders, knees right under the hips. We're pressed down firmly through the tops of the feet or toes can be curled under. We're doming through the chest cavity, pressing into the pads of each finger. Belly button is drawn up to the spine, gaze is straight down. Beautiful tables. We inhale, drop the belly, open the chest, tail lifts up towards the sky. Exhale, we round through, pulling from the tail, 
bringing the tail close to the belly button, doming out the chest cavity, dropping the crown. Inhale, drop the belly, open the chest. Exhale, we round through. Inhale, drop the belly, open the chest. Exhale, we round through. This time, when we do our cow, so we inhale, drop the belly, open the chest, let's lift the feet. Exhale, feet drop as we pull the tail. Once you get into your position of cat, we press into the feet, lifting the knees off the mat. So let's go for three rounds. Inhale, drop the belly, open the chest, lift the feet. Exhale, feet drop. We round through, lift the knees. Inhale, drop the belly, open the chest, feet lift. Exhale, feet drop, round through and lift the knees. Last one, inhale, drop the belly, open the chest, lift the feet. Exhale, we round through for cat, lifting, hold, knees in the air. Exhale, knees drop, we come to tabletop, big toes together, knees as wide as the yoga mat, and we sink hips back onto the heels. Extending arms out long as we start to melt the belly, chest, and forehead down to the mat. Mm. Extended child pose. Inhale, and on the exhale, we're taking both arms over off the left side of the mat, so hips and low body stay nice and heavy. And again, we drop the forehead back down to the mat. If you need a little bit more here, you can always bring the right hand on top of the left. Deepening that side body stretch. Releasing tension in the intercostal muscles, creating more room for our breath. And exhale draws you back through center as we take it to the other side. One more inhale and exhale draws us back through center. We press into the tops of the feet, claw through the fingertips and bring ourselves back up to tabletop. We square off our knees right under the hips. Toes curl under, we stay for the inhale and on the exhale, hips are going up high for our first downward dog. When you get there, pedal it out if you need to. Bending and straightening opposite legs. Otherwise, hips are up high if you need to come up onto the toes to get there or bend the knees or both. That's fine. Ears drop right next to the biceps. Elbow creases are shining towards each other or towards the front of the mat. Hips are up high, ribs are soft, belly buttons pulled back to the spine. Inhale. And after your exhale, we will start to move. So you can come up to the top of the mat in whatever way serves you. So either crisscross walk up to the front of the mat. Maybe you just take short walks here up on the tiptoes. Or maybe you hop or just take a big step. And we'll meet together in forward fold. When you get there, drop the crown to the earth. You clasp the elbows and gently rock side to side. We stay here for the inhale and exhale. We start to roll up to mountain. Arms come with us up overhead, palms kiss together and descend at the heart space. We check our alignment, notice how we feel. So we're rooted down equally through the inverted triangle underneath our feet. Our heels, the ball joint of the big toe, ball joint of the little toe. 
Arches are lifted. We're active through the midline, through the inner thighs. We're soft in the belly. Chest is wide open. Shoulders are drawn away from the ears. Shoulder blades are pinching together. Gaze is forward with a slight dip in the chin to protect our neck. Awesome. We're going to do our warm up flow, sun salutation B today, or a variation of it. So we drop the arms. On the inhale, and they come up. Exhale, we're bending the knees, bending from the hips as we fold into you, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, lifts you up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, we fold. Hands come down to the mat. We step the left foot back, then the right foot. We're in plank. And on the exhale, we're sending hips up high for downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts, three-legged dog. We bend at the right knee and draw the right toes over to the left side of the mat, shining the pelvis towards the right. Inhale, and on the exhale, we gracefully pull the right leg up in between the hands, low lunge. You can stay here, or if it's more comfortable to drop that back leg, you can definitely do that. Inhale, exhale, we rise to high lunge. Hands come up overhead as we settle. So as we go through our movements today, I would invite you to find places to ground and places to lift. So where can we make our foundation more firm and where can we lift the heart space, the head space, the third eye? Exhale, we open up to warrior two, Varibhadrasana two. When we're here, knee is right over the ankle of the front leg. We're firm through the back leg, pressing into the outside of the back foot. Back arch and front heel are in line with each other. Pelvis is right in line with the legs and the knees. Arms come in line with the shoulders. And we look out past the front fingers. Inhale, exhale, back arm drops to the back leg as we lift front arm up to the sky or maybe back towards the back edge of the mat. Inhale and exhale, sends you all the way down to your low lunge where we move from our hip and from our center to draw that right foot back, sending it right back up in the downward facing dog as we take it to the other side. So we inhale, left leg high. We bend at the knee. Left toes come over to the right side of the mat, towards the right side of the mat, as we shine the pelvis open to the left. Stay for the inhale. The exhale moves you right up between the hands. We're in low lunge or back leg is dropped. Inhale, exhale, powers you up. To high lunge, we lift the arms and settle. So hips are squared off to the front of the mat. Shoulder blades are pinching together and then melting down the back. Exhale, we open to warrior two. Revadrasana two. Inhale, exhale, back arm drops, front arm lifts. Peaceful warrior. We stay for the inhale. Exhale, rotates us back into our low lunge and we move from our hip, from our center. We stay in downward facing dog for one breath. And our exhale sends us up. And we roll up to mountain, arms come up overhead, palms descend at the heart space. Here we go, we're going for three more rounds. So move at your own pace, I'll cue you along the way. Arms go down to come up. 
Exhale, fold into Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Hands come down. Balankasana, plank. Inhale, exhale, hips up high. Downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts and bends. We shine the pelvis over towards the right. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, steps you up, low lunge. Exhale, we rise. Exhale, we open, warrior two. Exhale, peaceful warrior. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, windmills the arms, pivoting on the back foot, coming back into our low lunge. And we move back into downward facing dog. Here you go, on the other side, you got this. Sinking up your breath with movement. Move at your own pace. If you sit in more flows than we do in what I'm in what I'm doing here, that is great, but not necessary. So because our root chakra is connected with so many uh, of our innate primal instincts. It is also the home of all of the really big feelings, fear, anger. Mm. And so the way that these can mm, present or show their face, whether the chakra is blocked, underactive, or overactive. We may have problems setting boundaries. We may experience issues of overindulgence, whether that's overeating, overspending, and any other sorts of addictions, alcohol, drug use. So when I tell you to find places to ground and, and places to lift, when you're in your downward dog, we'll hang for three breaths. I mean that on the mat, but I also mean that in your life. So everything we do on the mat is a transition or it can be translated to our day-to-day -day lives. We stay here for the inhale. Exhale, we step up to forward fold. Fingers come down to the mat and we heel toe, heel toe the feet as wide as the mat, but we're keeping the outside of the feet parallel with the long edge of the mat. So we're not spilling off today like we do in our squat. We inhale and on the exhale, we send the hips back coming into a modification of a wide-legged forward fold. So this is a cross between a wide-legged forward fold and chair pose. Toes are squared off to the front of the mat, knees are right above the ankles. Belly is engaged and brought down right next to the thighs. Arms can be on the toes. You have them directly under your gaze. 
You can bring the palms together, shooting out wide. We're here for two more breaths. And exhale, fold, fingertips come down to the mat as we take the toes off the mat now, 45 degree angle. We sink the pelvis right in between the heels or Malasana, our yogi squat, garland pose. Man, I'm kind of spazzy today. Let me get back to what I was saying. Everything that we do on the mat can be translated into our life. So uh, that's the, one of the great things about yoga is we have this safe space to practice these changes and these new habits and these new thought processes with our bodies. So when we find places to lift and places to ground, like here, we're pressing down firmly into our feet. We're active through the legs, active through the elbows. We're sending the tail down to the mat and we're lifting the heart to the thumbs. So where in your life can you find places to ground and places to lift? Oftentimes they are one and the same. Maybe they are your family, your friends, your relationship with your higher power, your meditation practice. Maybe you're not there yet and your, your grounding practices, your foundation and where you live are, are different um, and are in transition. Maybe it's something a little bit unhealthier. We're here for one more breath. And on the exhale, we shift forward, bringing the hands to the mat. We lift the hips just to walk the feet back in line together, hip width apart. We inhale and on the exhale, we're gonna step the left foot back nice and wide. Hands come to the left side of the mat as we pivot the right toes towards the long edge of the left side of the mat, bringing ourselves to the midline, wide-legged forward fold. When you get there, we're just like we were in Warrior Two. We're active through the outsides of the thighs or the outside of the feet. So we're pressing down into the outside of the feet and our triangle. We're active through the thighs, drawing energy, or active through the uh, arches, drawing energy up through the midline, the inner thigh. Belly button is tucked to the spine and crown drops towards the earth. If this is too much for you, you can always uh, shorten your stance or widen your stance. Find that sweet spot for your own body. You can also build the earth up to you, bringing blocks or books here if your hands don't quite reach the mat. We stay for the inhale. And on the exhale, lower body is staying right where it is, very strong, rooted in our foundation. And we walk the hands over to the right foot. So another little side body stretch. Inhale. Exhale guides you through center as we walk the hands over to the left foot. Exhale, draws you back through center. We press into the fingertips and lift halfway. Inhale, and on the exhale, we're gonna shift our weight over to the right foot. So depending on where you are at in your practice, you can come all the way down to a half squat, skandasana, or we stay nice and high here using our hands to guide us. So we shift over to the right, so we stay for the inhale, Exhale moves us as we bring hips over the midline, shifting the weight over to the left. Exhale moves us back to the other side. 
Exhale, hips up and over as we shift the weight over to the left. Notice how my gaze is straight down. We're keeping length in the neck, the back of the neck, the spine. Exhale, brings you back to center. Hands come to the waist. Elbows are nice and wide as we continue to draw the shoulders away from the ears. We inhale, we squeeze the inner thighs together, active through the core as we lift ourselves up first halfway. Take a breath and exhale. We rise all the way up. Ooh, yeah. Bring that pelvis really into the midline here. So you're almost like exaggerating this thrust with the pelvis. And then we put, if you need to uh, do this in your own way, that's totally fine. But we're going to bring the heels. So right now heels are pointing out away from us. We're gonna bring them into the midline. So we just press up into the toes and bring those heels right to the midline. So same angle, different direction. Beautiful. We inhale, arms come up overhead. On the exhale, we're bending the knees. Knees are gonna run along the same line as the big toe. Pelvis stays right through the midline. Arms come to cactus arms, elbows in line with the shoulders, hands open wide. Inhale, arms lift straight, legs straighten. We come back to where we began. Inhale, exhale, we bend the arms, bend the legs. Goddess pose. Inhale, legs straighten, arms straighten. We're going for two more. Exhale, we move. Inhale, lift. Exhale, we shift down into goddess, Utkatna Konasana. Exhale, we straighten the legs, drop the arms, and we heel toe the feet once as we sink back down into our squat. Adjust when you get there if you need to. We're here for three breaths. You're doing awesome. Excellent. To come out, we're going to dive our weight forward, bringing the hands to the earth. We're gonna drop one knee, drop the other knee, come into tabletop. Let's shift our, our hips and gaze back to the front side of the mat. So here we are again in tabletop. We're gonna bring the left knee right to the midline. So knee is almost right underneath your belly button. You can get here if you need to adjust in whatever way. We're gonna lift the right knee up as we shift, almost like we're coming when we come into like knee to nose pose, and we cross the right knee over the left. Left foot swings over to the right as we sink the hips back, cow face pose. If this is too much for you, you can always come up on a block if that feels good, uh, or if this just doesn't feel good at all, you can always come into a hero, a hero pose, bringing the knees together, the feet wide, and sinking the pelvis down in between the heels all the way to the mat. The idea here is we just widen the hips, open the hips, so we need to close them off now. Once you're in cow phase, you can bring the hands right to the arches. If you are versed in your practice or want to try something new today, you can always take cow face arms behind the back. So left hand comes top of the hand right in between the shoulder blades. Right arm lifts high, bends at the elbow. 
palm facing the back as it clasps the left fingers. Or we just stay with hands on the arches. We're here for one more breath. And exhale. We're going to go out the way that we came. So we dive forward, unravel, and take it to the other side. So left, excuse me, right foot comes to the midline. Left knee reaches up in between the hands and then over. Right foot swings over to the left side of the mat as we sink the hips down. Cow face. So if you are going to include this in your own practice later or like to play around on your mat, you can always keeping the hips heavy and rooted to the ground, come into a forward fold variation here. Um, but for now, because the root and the heart are so connected, we're gonna keep the chest wide open. We're here for one more breath. And exhale, we dive forward to unravel. We're back in our tabletop position. We're gonna shoot the left leg out and then the right leg out coming into plank. We shift forward onto the toes and on the exhale, we gently with elbows tight to the side body, lower all the way down. Toes flip so that the tops of the feet are flush with the mat. Feet are hip width apart, so we're not synced up here in the legs. We're pressing down through the tops of the feet. Knees are active. We give this slight tuck to the pelvis, which is going to firm the glutes, but not uh, squeeze them. Bringing our root chakra right up to the ground. Hands are right underneath the armpits. Sorry guys, don't mind my toes, they're cramping a little bit. Hands are right underneath the armpits, right in line with the breastbone. Gaze is straight down, forehead to the mat. We inhale and exhale just to settle. Feel your foundation, places the ground before we lift. So we inhale, pressing into the hands and pressing into the feet. We let the belly move us, expanding, lifting the chest. And lastly, the head, cobra. Shoulders are pulled down away from the ears. Shoulder blades are pinched together. Belly is soft, we're rooted down through the pelvis, the root chakra, the tops of the thighs, and the tops of the feet. Exhale, we fold. Head is the last thing to fall. If that's too much for you, you can always just do a baby cobra coming up halfway. Again, we inhale, rise. Head is the last thing to rise. We are strong. We are safe. We are secure. Exhale, float back down one more time. Inhale. I am strong, I am safe, I am secure. Exhale, fold, beautiful. We're gonna bring left foot, left heel towards left buttocks, left glute, right arm extends out long. Forehead drops back to the mat and you can either stay here or if you have the range, we reach back to the toes, pulling that heel towards the glute, reactivating that slight tilt in the pelvis, really rooting down the, the pelvis to the mat. We stay for one more inhale. And exhale, we release, taking it to the other side. So left arm comes out long, we bend the right leg. 
maybe reaching around to grab the toes or the inner arch. We're firm in our foundation. And exhale, we release. Go ahead and bring the hands right underneath the forehead, palm over palm. As we drop the forehead or the side of the face to the hands, go ahead and take your Shavasana today in a prone position, belly down, root down, root to earth, Muladhara, root chakra. Thank you for practicing with me today. A great thing tonight to do would be to uh, practice a root chakra meditation just to sync up with what we did with our bodies today. Stay here for as long as you like. Otherwise, I will see you on Friday.